Welcome to module four. Module four is 10 forensic evidence discovery questions. And again, you should have read chapter 12 and chapter 13, which are parts one and parts two, uh, to these evidence discovery questions. In the book, it's like titled slightly differently. They're talked about as evidence reliability tests, but I've also explained to you how we use them in different ways. I want to run through them very quickly for you. And I want to do that simply because it really covers the entire process of forensics that you'll be going through in this class. The first discovery question is this, and it's something that you need to try and integrate into your life every day and ask within, you know, as you go through your day, ask this question about yourself, ask this question about other people. That is, it's exceptionality. D discovery question number one is, what are you exceptional at? What are you when you compare yourself to the rest of your friends and family and the people in your school and the people in your corporation? that you stand in the top 25% of when compared to and when competing against or the top 20 or the top 10 the higher you go in terms of percentage obviously the greater that strength would be the second discovery question is one that I will come back to in a little while but it's called flow have you experienced flow or being in the zone I want to spend a little bit more time in that and I will do that in a few moments the third question talks about what has been preserved in your life evidence that leaves an imprint is evidence that's preserved. Where you really have had an impact in someone's life, it's something that is preserved and it's kept on for time. It's something you've done that the results have continued to you know, be shown in your life and the lives of others. A newspaper you started, a team you began. Uh, something that just is a, is a deep imprint in your life. Number four is discovery question four. What is it that's been easily repeated in your life? Something that you can do over and over again at a high level of capacity. Not simply a flash in the pan, I talked about in the book something that I had done relating to basketball, but something again that is easily repeated over and over again. You don't have to think about it, it's just natural to who you are. Discovery question five is, what have your friends said about you? If you think that you have a unique capacity and your friends don't think it, that you do, and they've observed you day in and day out over a long period of time, it's not likely you do. But that's not what we're looking for, remember. We're looking for strengths, evidence of strength. The evidence that does not lie. The things, again, that define your unique capacities that are exceptional, that are preserved. So what is it your friends say about you? When they look at you and say, you know what, you're really good at that. I love watching you do it because when you do it, you just seem so alive. I've watched you throughout these years that I've known you and you're just so good at it. So what do your friends, your family, the people that see you every day say about you? Discovery question number six talks about expert witnesses. And witnesses are so much part of every trial and every part of every forensic process. An expert witness is someone who has either academic credentials or has a long experience of, whose peers look at them and recognize them as an expert, as someone who really knows what they're talking about. Who are the experts in your life who said you really are, you're good at, you're exceptional at, and you know that they are at maybe in the top of their career, or they're the head coach of, or they the CEO or department manager. They know what they're talking about. Discovery question number seven is spontaneous action. What are those things that you just, the first time you attempted, you were good at? It's not something anyone really had to teach you to do, but you just, by your own action, by your own spontaneous attempt too, were really good at it. Discovery question eight is a really simple question, but it says, what do you do in your own time when nobody forces you, when you're not required to? If I was to look at the history on your computer, or I was to look at the type of books you read, the magazines you have, where you spend your time, that talks about living choices, living things that I know I just love doing. And so often people say, you know, the way you discover purpose or passion in your life is simply ask you, well, what are the things that make you come alive? These things that you do in your spare time are not required are really those things. Discovery question number nine is what's called positive emotion. What makes positive emotion in your life? What generates happiness and a sense of satisfaction, a sense of gratitude, a sense of exhilaration? The things that you do and the things that you pull back to because they make you feel good on a regular basis and that are productive for your life, that build your life and make you feel just so alive. And then discovery question number 10, it's part of every forensic evaluation as well. It's about intuition, about those things that might not seem forensic. But you will know, and if you watch any forensic shows, even from the old Agatha Christie to the CSI, very often a detective will follow a hunch. It's something that the evidence really has not seen, was not obvious, but they follow that hunch. And that's what intuition is. It's something that we just know deep down inside. 
So let's go back to discovery question number two. And discovery question number two talks about flow. And you have an exercise on page eight and nine, and I think ten as well, that talks about flow. Flow, to me, is probably the most important discovery question or measure of what a strength is. If you think that you have a strength and you've never experienced this concept of flow, it's unlikely that you have, or you, that this so-called strength that you believe in really is. The evidence doesn't lie. Being in flow says you have that strength. Let me help you understand it. If you go and you look at a chapter on page 8 and you look at that little diagram that I have there, and let me help you explain it. Flow has been called a state of grace. It comes from a French concept, just mean it, you know, it simply means it's, you do it with effortless ease and you do it at a high level of capacity. There's a great movie called Chariots of Fire in which the, the Olympic runner, it's a true story, talked about how when he was running and running for Scotland and running in the Olympics, he felt the pleasure of God. So it's a sense that knowing that I am doing what I was created to do, and if the Creator has made me and endowed me with certain strengths, and I live them, it's no different from me as a father, looking at my children, doing something that they do exceptionally, and feeling that sense of real connection, just saying, my child, my son, my daughter, I love you, and I see you doing what you were made to do. And so it's that pleasure of God, that state of grace. So what is flow? First of all, what is not flow? Think about those things in your life that create anxiety in your life, those things that make you freeze up. Those are the things that in your life you do not possess a strength. That is, you have a high challenge. You look at the diagram, it says HC or high challenge and low skill. The things that demand great, a great level of challenge and I just am not endowed with, I don't have the DNA for, are the things that cause me anxiety. They make me freeze, they make me hold back, they, I have a visceral reaction to them. And I share with you mathematics is one of those things in my life. So look at your life. It's not always about overcoming the anxieties. Trying to overcome anxiety when you don't have the capacity to do what you require to do is a senseless exercise. But again, we're trying to help you discover flow in your life. Second one is what about boredom? Can you think of those things in your life where you just are absolutely bored? Boredom is when you have a high level of capacity, that is you have a strength or a skill, and that the challenge just really isn't there. It's like if you're an NFL player and you're asked to go play high school football. The challenge isn't there, it's boring. You can walk over people, you can throw far further than other people can throw. You can catch and run and score touchdowns easily. The challenge just really isn't there. It's like being a college professor and doing grade level mathematics, same thing. The challenge just isn't there. You have the capacity but no challenge. Flow is when you have a skill, a strength, a high level of capacity. That is, when it meets a high challenge, you experience a sense of, I'm performing at the height of my capacity. It's a tired place where time and space just seem to disappear. It's when all the emotional problems of your life just are not there for that period of time. It can be something that you begin and then five hours later you look up and it seemed like ten minutes went by. That's what flow is. So I want you to think about, and I want you to begin to identify in your life where you, where you have experienced flow. Because if you can identify those areas of your life where you have experienced flow, that is, when you've met that high challenge with a high level of capacity and a unique ability, that's where you discover strength. You will see at the end of the five areas of evidence, which we will get to in the next couple of modules, you will see a diagram that is just really a matrix that says DQ1 through DQ10. That is discovery question 1 through discovery question 2. And I want you to think about those every day. Think about them and journal them. Get them in your head and print them in your brain. And I want you to keep asking those questions as you go through every day. I want you to take the follow-on questions from this chapter and I want you to take them very seriously. One of them asks you to email some of your friends and family, witnesses in your life, and ask them to tell you who you're good at. It's a great exercise. So let's continue this process of discovery as we go to module number five.